We are 48 schools across 14 cities, but together we are one Shawnee mission, and this is our time to shine. Welcome to episode 14 of Shiny Mission Mic'd Up. I'm Dr. Michelle Hubbard, and I'm the host for the show today. And I'm Dr. Jeremy Higgins, the co-host for Shiny Mission Mic'd Up. Thank you all for being here and listening in today. We're glad that you're here for this episode. Dr. Higgins, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm sad that I missed out on our last episode. I'm sad you missed it because it was so much fun. Yeah, rub, yeah. rub it in. The one that I you know, wanted to be at the most, and I have to be out of town. Well, I guess there is this correlation between... We were at a sporting event at Shiny Mission South where the Shiny Mission South girls and boys played the Shiny Mission Northwest girls and boys. And I believe you were also at a sporting event. Yeah, um, my daughter um, likes to do cheer. And so we were at a cheer competition all weekend. So I love it. Um, yeah, very, very exciting. I'm glad you were playing dad. Yeah, so absolutely. good for you. Thank you. So um, Prince Miller from Shiny Mission South and Tad Lambert at Shiny Mission Northwest were the co hosts. They were amazing. So if you haven't picked up episode 13, it's definitely worth the watch. And then in addition to that, we had a three student reporters that went into the gym and interviewed kids as they were um, just doing what they do and parents and coaches. And so we have a variety of people that talked about what high school sports mean and just the environment that it creates when you have these amazing basketball teams. But also thanks to Charlie, Patrick and Tyler who supported us doing that. You know, it's it's fun to um be able to provide a little bit of a glimpse into those high school sporting activities because they do uh, play such a big part in the experience uh, for our high school students. Um, and I know that that was a really good game, two really good teams, environment yeah. was fantastic. So uh, what a great way to, to showcase that for, for our listeners. And at the end of the night, um, Shiny Mission South girls remained undefeated. Shiny Mission Northwest boys remained undefeated. So just an exciting season for both of them. I know the Shiny Mission Northwest boys are still undefeated, and the Shiny Mission South girls are now 17-1, and one, but still doing amazing things. And I can't wait to watch them finish the season. Yeah, good luck to all of our teams district-wide. Um, I think that this is the last week, and then we start um, sub-state playoffs next week. So... Um, you know, good luck to all of our teams. Hopefully they continue to progress, especially in basketball. Swimming just finished up this weekend. We got state bowling coming up. Just as we wrap up the, the, the winter season, just good luck to all of our athletes and keep doing your thing. And wrestling. Wrestling. Forget wrestling. Yeah. I think bowling. We have a bowling season right now, don't we? Or, yes. You, yeah, and maybe. State is coming up. I think state's coming up uh, this week, maybe. And so. I also, just a quick shout out to Grady O'Connor, who um, won the state uh, to, broke a state record in, I believe, the 200 from Shiny Mission South. So it's exciting for the Ch weekend. Kids doing great things all around, which Absolutely. is awesome. Yeah. So that's kind of a recap of our last one. So let's move on to our episode today. Yeah, we have a special guest we do sitting have, here. We do. <laughs> hey, guys. Hi, Dr. Schumacher. How are you? I'm really well. Thanks for having me. You bet. We're glad you're joining us today. So as most everyone knows at this point that I've announced my retirement for the end of the school year and I'm super excited about that. I don't, everyone asks me what's next and I don't really know what's next, but I was told this weekend to quit saying that and just say whatever I want to be next. <laughs> but anyway, I, heard that I, a lot. I know, right? That's great. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I don't really know what is next for me, but I'm excited to just play more pickleball, more golf, spend some more time with my kids and just whatever whatever shows up. Sounds fantastic. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. But um, on uh, last week, the school board announced that Dr. Schumacher will be the next superintendent in yeah. Shiny Mission. So I'm super excited for you. And um, we have some hard hitting questions for you. Oh, wow. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fire right. away. Dr. Higgins, you want to kick us off? Yeah. First off, I, I think it's important, Dr. Schumacher, even though you've been in the district for nine years now, yeah. um, some of our listeners may not know anything about you um, or your background. So just tell us a little bit about kind of your, your background and what, what brought you to Shawnee Mission and to this position. Yeah. So working uh, maybe from this point backwards, I've uh, been in the district for nine years. Uh, I'm talking with my hands and put my hands down. Um, yeah. So ninth year in the, in the school district, been in HR for the last eight, uh, came to the district in the curriculum and instruction department. And so I have been on the learning side and the organizational side, uh, our operation side here in the district. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, a principal in Wyandotte County at Piper High School. Um, great experience uh, over there. 
And, and before that, I skipped around a little bit. And so one of the things I told the board is I found a home in Shawnee Mission. This is my ninth year. It's the longest in I've been in a school system and it's where I wanna be. I found a connection here. So prior to that, prior to Piper, um, I was in Blue Valley as an associate principal. Uh, I was in the Turner School District with Dr. Hubbard um, for one year. And then prior to that, uh, I was at a parochial school here in the area. Uh, Bishop Miege. I served as a science teacher, a coach, um, an assistant principal, kind of those typical roles there. So uh, jumped around a little bit, but again, uh, now that I've been in Shawnee Mission, it's it's where I want to be. Okay. Awesome. So I'm curious, have you always had aspirations to be a superintendent? You know, um, absolutely. It's kind of ebbed and flowed uh, throughout my career when I thought I would want to jump into that that, that role. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to challenge myself. I mean, each step along the way, whether it be, you know, from the classroom to the associate principal, from associate principal to principal, I felt like I wanted to challenge myself. And I felt like um, there was bigger opportunities to impact more people as you kind of climb the ladder of leadership and superintendent's it. And um, especially superintendent in, this, in a district like Shawnee Mission, it's so, um, uh, it's such an honor and it's such a big job. Um, and then, you know, when they, it's, it's kind of timing, right? I mean, I, I feel like I've stepped along the way to set myself up for success, uh, but it's all about timing too. Um, and you've been a, a tremendous mentor, Dr. Hubbard. Um, and when this opportunity came along, it's like, I've got to take a chance at it. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sure you haven't thought about next year at all. Um, <laughs> I've thought about it a lot, <laughs> but it's, it's been nothing, nothing else has been on my mind the last uh, week and a half. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, with all the meeting cancellations I've been getting exactly. as, as part yeah. of your team right now, I've, I've kind of noticed that. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about 2425 yeah. and um, share with us maybe some some goals that you have. Uh, for yourself, um, but also for the district. Yeah, so starting with the district, it's clearly going to come out of the strate strategic planning process. Um, and fortunately, um, because of Dr. Hubbard's um, fore forethinking, um, we are starting that strategic planning process today. And so I'm fortunate that the superintendent's been se uh, seated, me, or not seated, but named. Um, and we'll start that strategic planning process today with the steering committee. Uh, and so we'll let that work, that work of that team guide what we're going to do as far as the school system. I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. Um, for me personally, you know, right now it's about rounding out our team. You know, we've got some positions to name. We're going to have a lot of other administrative positions uh, to name throughout the spring. It's kind of that domino effect that happens as, you know, uh, in, in every school system as, you know, people get hired and people retire and things like that. Um, but, but for me personally, it's getting to meet more of our teachers, getting to meet more of our kids, getting out in the community and finding out, you know, what they want and in, in their superintendent and what they want and expect out of the, out of the school district, uh, for next year. Um, and it's big shoes to fill. I mean, Dr. Hubbard is the Kansas superintendent of the year and, you know, I'm not going to try to be her, um, but I do want to be successful. I want, you know, people to to see me as a representative of, of their school district um, and, um, you know, kind of a shining example of the, the greatness of the school district as well. No pressure. Tremendous amount of pressure. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you mentioned strategic planning. Let's talk about that just a little bit. What's yeah. your role going to be on the strategic planning process? Yeah, for I mean, right now it's, it's going to be interesting. I've never gone through it um, at this level, clearly. I mean, I was in the district when we went through the last cycle. Um, I wasn't on the steering committee, uh, but I was uh, a facilitator of many of the action teams. And so I, I know it from that point of view. I don't know it from this seat. I, I didn't, and like I said, I did not sit on the steering committee. So I'm gonna be learning as, as we go. For, for me, stepping into that meeting here in 30 minutes or so, I'm eager to just kind of listen and, and see what the community members um, are wanting and listen to the process and be a part of that process. Um, I know clearly I represent the district, you know, as I sit on that, on that, um, on that uh, team um, and I represent the Board of Education and, and their needs as well. So it's going to be a learning process. Um, I will add my two cents when asked, but I, I also recognize that um, I, I need to let the process play out. You know, someone in my position, I can kind of uh, just by position could steer the group in a certain way. And I don't think that's my role. I mean, I, I think I need to be a listener, a supporter uh, and let the process play out. 
So the next episode that we um, record is going to be an update on the strategic planning process. But just for our listeners, when you talk about the steering committee, I want to just clarify what that means for our listeners. So the steering steering committee um, is about 32 representatives of the district. It's students, teachers, administrators, parents, community members, board members. Um, we have some business partners there. We have representation from our um NEA, we have representation from the um, Shawnee Mission Education Foundation. So students, yeah. So it's this variety of people. It represents all five feeders. We wanted to really represent who we are as a district. So um, there are minority groups uh, represented. There are groups of students represented in regards to socioeconomics. Um, We just try to have that really we want it to look like the school district. And so those 32 people, as Dr. Schumacher um, mentioned, kick off um, today, which is Tuesday and Wednesday. And then this episode's dropping Thursday morning, actually. And so by then, the steering committee will have completed um, their work to land us with four to six um, action teams that we will be building moving forward. So we'll talk more about that in the next episode. But um, I'm glad that we had the conversation about the strategic yeah, planning sure. committee, for yeah. sure. Dr. Schumacher, a couple of episodes ago, uh, Dr. Dr. Hubbard and I talked about uh, chronic absenteeism yeah. and, and obviously the, the challenges that um, the district is facing around um, that issue. What do you see as uh, one of the biggest challenges that is facing the Shawnee Mission School District? I think chronic absenteeism is one at the student level. Um, And so maybe just to, I guess, extend that a little bit. I mean, I'm not sure exactly. I did listen to the, to the episode. Yeah, you better say that. (laughs) (laughs) That is the right answer. Thank you very much. But I mean, to me, it's about uh, what we can do immediately. It's about engagement. It's about making sure that our kids feel a connection to the school um, and to the classroom. Um, But beyond that, I mean, to your question, uh, at a bigger kind of board superintendent level, Um, I think it's special education funding. I mean, I I think it's funding in general uh, for public education. Um, I I think we'll continue um, to get pressure um, from from people uh, outside of our system uh, about the value of public education. So I think we really need to play our role and and do our part in, in advertising the greatness of what public schools can do. Um, and specifically the greatness that Shawnee Mission is. Um, so um, we really need to control that narrative and make sure with our communications team, with all of our leadership, uh, that we're sharing all of the great things we're doing around real world learning, around those client connected projects, all of the great things that our kids are doing and our teachers. Um, so to me, that's one of the biggest things, um, but we'll continue to face with our kids, uh, that chronic absenteeism, mental health um, issues, you know, still that we're still seeing out of the pandemic. And we need to continue to push our kids to perform um, at the highest possible levels levels on state assessments, norm reference tests, all of the different things um, that we use to measure uh, those pieces of success. So you talked about the greatness in Shawnee Mission. Yeah. And I have a really strong opinion on this answer. We'll see if we're aligned. Okay. Tell me what's the greatest thing about Shawnee Mission? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think this may be your answer too. It's the people uh, that we yep. work with. Um, you know, our kids are amazing. Um, uh, one of the greatest things that you've done, uh, Dr. Hubbard, is really pushed us as a leadership team to get out into the schools. Uh, you know, we, we block out our schedules every Thursday and we get out into schools. And we see our kids and our, our teachers and our interacting. It's amazing. I mean, sometimes in, in our role, we can get bogged down in kind of the minutia and some of the negative stuff that, that happens in school systems. And then you get out into, into a kindergarten classroom and you're like, oh, my gosh. I mean, there's amazing things happening out there. So it's the people. Um, and so not just our kids and our teachers and our parents and every, everybody else, but it's the entire community. And you know this, too. I mean, we, we are made up of so many different communities that are so different. And so we are really a representative group, um, group, a represent, representative uh, community of what Kansas is. I mean, we are so diverse across our school system. I think that's one of the things that makes us so great and so unique compared to other school districts. I love those Thursday morning visits. Yeah. I don't know about you, Dr. Higgins, but it's amazing. It, it really is the best part of my week. And I think when I, um, in my previous superintendency, I was in a space that was much smaller. And so I literally knew every single teacher. I could yeah. walk into their rooms and sometimes I could even just say, 
you know, how's Sarah doing? Yeah. And know them by name and know their kids' names. And so it was that was the hardest part for me in um, making the transition to right. being the superintendent in Shawnee Mission is that relationships are so important. And I think they're so important to our work. And it's hard when the right. ship is so big. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my goal on Thursday mornings is to meet a new friend or a new teacher. So when I say a friend, an, a new student. So um, just walking into schools and making a, a connection with someone, knowing their name. And the next time I see them to be able to say, Michael, how are you? Right. right? And um, just that connection with teachers, too. So that's just my own personal goal. And uh, it's amazing how many people I meet on those um, school visits and if you if you change anything at all, don't change that. <laughs> no way, no way at all. Yeah, I love it as well. And so in my role, you know, I was in Dr. Higgins' role before I stepped into my current position as associate soup. Um, and I hired so many people, you know, hundreds of people every year. And so I get out there and, and unfortunately, I've sometimes I've forgotten some of the folks, you know, that, that I've hired. And then I see them and I, oh, absolutely. And so we make that connection again. And so... It's great. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to continue that that practice. Awesome. Yep. Dr. Schumacher, uh, talk with us a little bit about what students and teachers can expect from you. Yeah, somebody who's connected, you know, um, I'm, I'm really excited for people to find out who I am kind of outside of my current role. Um, you know, I mean, in, in our role in, in um, HR, sometimes we have to be a little... Um, what word do I want to say, Dr. Higgins? Maybe... Um, you don't always get to do the fun stuff. We don't stuff. always get to do the fun stuff, right? I mean, I mean, offering those positions, that's absolutely fun. That's one of the most fun uh, pieces of our job. But outside of that, there's sometimes robotic and we have to be really you know, connected to the negotiated agreement or, or whatever else. And I'm really excited for people to see Mike um, for, for who I am and my personality because I do have one. <laughs> um, and, um, and I'm really excited about that. You know, I think, you know, people who have seen me outside of you know, this role, you know, whether it be as a principal or in my curriculum side, uh, know that, you know, I am really engaged in learning. I really love getting, you know, kind of hands on with the kids. Um, and so that's the biggest piece. And then, you know, you know this as well as anyone, Dr. Hubbard, but getting out and meeting our, our community members um, and, you know, whether, I, you know, I'm excited to be, I'm sorry, hard time saying this, but, you know, the face of Shawnee Mission, right? And um, I, I, I welcome that, and I'm really excited about that, that piece of the role as well. Speaking of being the face of Shawnee Mission, you're the first Hispanic leader. I what, am. What's that yeah. mean to you? Um, it is um, overwhelming a little bit. I, I understand the uh, significance uh, of that. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the, um, one of the things that, that I recognize is the fact that we track our, our demographics uh, in HR, uh, and we, we understand that our largest minority student group are Hispanic or, or Latinx. And for them to see, you know, their, their superintendent uh, you know, looking like them, I think that's, that's powerful. And one of the things that has been, that came out of our last strategic plan was the fact that we wanted a more diverse workforce. And we've been working towards that. Dr. Higgins and the rest of our team have been working towards that, and we're making progress. We're not where we want to be. But I think it's a shining example of our commitment to that. Um, and so, I, you know, clearly I will represent every single employee, every single student. Um, but it is, I, I understand the significance of it and the responsibility that I have in serving as the first Hispanic uh, superintendent in the school district's history. Great. Yeah. Last question. Okay. Well. One fun fact someone should know about you. Oh, boy. Maybe you should do it. Do you, do you know anything fun about me? I don't. I don't I don't call this fun because I only run if a dog is chasing me. <laughs> but um yeah. you ran the Boston Marathon. Yeah, I've ran a few marathons. Um yeah, so I've ran the Boston Marathon, New York, um, Chicago. So um yeah, that's my thing. I like to run. Glutton for punishment. Glutton for punishment. Um yeah, so that's one of the one of the things that I guess is unique about me and something that's interesting. It's 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 something that centers me. It's I get up early. That's how I kind of start my day and get things kind of settled. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I like to run and um, yeah. So awesome. I, do. I, I do have one more question though, okay. and Dr. Hubbard probably doesn't care about this whatsoever. Um, but 
I'm curious about the status of the podcast moving forward. I mean, is what, what do you think? What do you do? You, you want to keep doing it, or do you think it's been successful? You better say it's been successful. Well, of course it's been. Right here. Of course it it's been successful. I, I, you know, I just didn't know what uh, what the new boss I was, I was, thought about it. I was telling my wife I was doing this this morning, and she's like, "Oh, you're gonna have so much fun with that." I was like, "Absolutely, I'm really looking forward to it and continuing it." And she's like, "What's the name of it?" And I go, "Shiny Mission Mic'd Up." And she's like. Mike, Mike, oh, oh my gosh! It's wow. I mean, it was uh, fortuitous. Yeah. There you go. Wow, there yeah. you go. Good call, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. We're so glad you're here, and um, no one wants you to be more successful than I do. So Thank you, Dr. I'll be cheering you on. Thank you. So. All right. Um, I just want to remind everyone that new episodes drop every other week on Thursdays, and um, you can find those on our website and Shiny Mission dot org smsd.org sorry i screw this up every time i don't know why i see it all the time and then i get here and it doesn't come out smsd.org and there's also um, a link there if you want to give us some ideas for future episodes we're always looking for future episodes but um yeah as you mentioned earlier next episode is going to be on the strategic plan a little update on yes. the strategic plan so we'll look forward to that here in a couple of weeks um, shout outs as always to our communications team for all the work that you guys do on Shawnee Mission Mic'd Up to Logan DeAngelis for your work on the music um, you want to hit us with the quote this time? Yeah and I want to give an extra special shout out to our communications team as we went um, to Shawnee Mission South to record last time what a lot of work that is and just the amount of work that goes in behind the scenes is these these people do such an amazing job. It's fun that we can come up with crazy ideas and they go along with it. They, they don't tell they don't say no. No, they don't. They're so, awesome. Yeah. They're always willing. So as a matter of fact, I think they even thought it was kind of fun. So um, with that said, I'm going to leave you for a quote. So I'll leave you with a quote. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams from Henry David Thoreau. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. And until then, shine on Shawnee Mission. Mm -hmm.